Hey everyone, it's Ben. Today we're doing a video on a Whirlpool or Maytag washing machine that has electronic control board, it has these lights in it. If it is either not agitating or it is not spinning out properly, maybe it's trying to spin and it's failing out due to some error codes like a uh, F7E1 or F0E2. So the deal with this fix is that normally in other videos, they're going to suggest that you replace the hub in the unit. But what we're finding out with some of these modern Whirlpool or Maytag washing machines is that the gear case splines are so damaged that a traditional plastic hub will not work. And usually the recommendation if the plastic hub keeps stripping out is just to go out and purchase a brand new gear case, which is very expensive. Well, come to find out, they used to put these all metal drive blocks on them that are very reminiscent of the old school 80s Whirlpool Direct Drive. And come to find out that you can replace the plastic hub with one of these metal ones. And I gotta tell you, these things work 100 times better and it should last much longer and provide a fix where normally you'd probably throw the machine away or get the gear case. So let's show you how to install this. It's not too hard, but there are some particular things you gotta do. You need a hammer, a quarter inch hex head screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver here, and then the specialty old school spanner nut wrench. They're not too expensive, but it is a specialty tool. So let's go ahead and take the wash plate off and get to it. Before we get into the hub replacement itself, make sure that the issue is not the wash plate by spinning the plate around with your hand. If the plate moves without the drum spinning along with it and it feels very loose and floppy, also make sure that the washer's shift actuator can shift between the agitate and spin modes. To learn how to do this, watch my video on how to do Whirlpool manual test modes and the link should be popping up right about now. It will also be at the end of the video and in the description as well. If you have those two things ruled out, let's go ahead and get the hub out by first removing the pulsator cap with a putty knife or a flat bladed screwdriver. Remember that the hub, tools, and other items we use in this video will be in the description as well as a pinned comment and also the product tag feature too. Now, once you have the pulsator cap off, you'll need to take a 7 16 socket wrench to remove the wash plate screw. This is usually on pretty tightly, and sometimes the wash plate or gear case has a tendency to move when you try to unscrew it counterclockwise, so you may have to use your other hand to hold the wash plate in place. Once you have the bolt out, it is now time to take the wash plate off. This wash plate, of course, comes out really easy on camera, but oftentimes these plates are horrible to get off. If you find the plate difficult, I do have two other videos that I'm going to try to link in the description on how I've taken them off in the past. But any more recently, the best way that we use to take the wash plates off if they're stuck is to use a washer cleaning mix like a fresh or the citric acid wash bomb that I sell on my website. Once I pour in a bit of the mix, what I typically do is run the manual mode to fill the washer with hot water, let the hot water sit and soak up the citric acid for 30 minutes, then run the manual agitation test with the wash plate bolt off and the wash plate has a tendency to work itself off during agitation with the tub mostly filled with water. And I will have a link to my wash mix kit in the description if you'd like to support the channel and buy it too. With the plate out, let's go ahead and inspect the old plastic hub. At first glance, it seems to look okay from the outside. Let's go ahead and take the hub out by using a pair of needle nose pliers to remove the U-pin that holds the hub in place. Once the pen is out, take towels or washcloths and place them in the tub where the holes are. This prevents the screws that we're going to take out from falling into those areas, just in case they fall out of the screwdriver when you take them out. On this step, I'm using a drill gun to quickly remove these extremely long screws from the hub. There are six screws in all. One was underneath where that pen was, so make sure to look out for it because it sometimes likes to be obscure. Make sure that you locate all the screws when you pull them out. And with the screws removed, you should be able to just pull up the hub and out. I use the channel lock for extra leverage. Otherwise, you may have to use a screwdriver underneath to pry it up. Go ahead and take the towels out of the washing machine. And now we can inspect the gear case splines. Depending on what they look like, you may want to clean the splines up of the gear case with a rotary tool, wire brush, or a cordless drill gun with a wire pad like I am here with my rotary tool. It's not perfect after this, but it's a bit better than when we started. The metal hub kit comes with six new replacement screws and the entire three piece assembly can be disassembled by hand, but you do need specialty tools to finish it off. The first piece going on is the drive block, which locks onto the splines. So go ahead and line it up with the splines and press it down onto the gear case. 
you want to make sure that the top teeth are flush against the gear case block. So you may want to take a large socket if you have one along with a plastic hammer and gently tap down on it a time or two to secure it in place. Next with that done, take the metal hub and place it down onto the wash tub. You need to line it up with the screw holes in the tub. And I found out that I had to take the hub off one or two times to reinsert it onto the drive block and gear case to make sure it perfectly lined up. Make sure that the tub is pulled up. It has a tendency to pop down and you need to make sure that the screws can thread in from the hub to the tub because sometimes that tub again will rest in such a way that the screws could strip out the tub underneath when securing the hub. You don't want to pull the tub up with the screws. You want to just merely secure the hub to the tub. When you're ready to do this, make sure to drop towels onto the tub's drainage holes again, and then go ahead and begin to screw the screws in. To prevent over tightening, you may want to use just a standard Phillips head screwdriver and don't tighten the first screw too much because you may have to reposition the hub after you get the first screw on. So I leave them loose on to start. Insert the second screw directly opposite from wherever you installed the first one so they're going to be inserted equally. Go ahead and start inserting all six and these screws are insanely long so it takes a while to screw them down into place. Get all six into place and then tighten them down properly but not too tight to where they would strip out. As you can see there's still a good bit of play in between the inner and outer wash tubs which is a huge problem but that is about to change with this next piece the tub nut being installed. Before you install the tub nut, make sure to drench the threads in your favorite brand of thread locker, which here we're using a Permatex Blue. You want to always make sure it's a medium strength thread locker. Also note the cure time of the thread locker, which is 24 hours at normal temperature, but you can hasten this up with a higher temperature using a heat gun if you like. Once with the thread locker on, go ahead and take the spanner nut wrench and use it to tighten the nut down as hard as you can by hand. Once you've completed the hand tightening, use a mallet to hit the spanner wrench to tighten the nut further. You'll need to strike the spanner wrench about three quarters of a full turn to get it fully tightened down and you don't want to go too much further than that to over tighten and strip it out. With the threaded nut on, you can now see that there's virtually no play in the tub, which is amazing. The final piece is now to put the wash plate back on. It'll drop it directly down when the splines are lined up with the gear case. One of the final things now is to put the thread locker on the wash plate bolt. Use a blue thread locker again to secure it. You want to drip it vertically, not horizontally like I did here, which kind of made a mess. Once you have the thread locker on, go ahead and use your socket wrench to tighten the wash plate bolt down. And then finally reinsert the cap and you are almost done. Go ahead and let the thread locker cure for a while. And once it's cured, you want to finally recalibrate the washing machine. To do that, you can watch my Whirlpool Reset video, which is at the end of the video, or to do it quickly, unplug the machine, wait 30 seconds, plug the machine back in, rotate the dial 360 degrees, preferably to the 12 o'clock position, turn the dial to the right three clicks, left one click, then right one click, all at a certain cadence, give about half a second in between each click, and the diagnostic lights should show up. Recalibration will be the fourth turn to the right, and then with lights illuminated, you'll press the start button, and the unit will recalibrate the all new metal hub, and you should be fully done with the installation. Hopefully never having to repair the hub and have your washing machine work for quite some time in the future. I hope this video helped you out. Make sure to check the link for the product tags that are at the bottom of the description, and I hope you have a wonderful day.